Hi there, my name is David Reese, and I'm the founder of ArtisanalPencilSharpening.com. I'm a professional pencil sharpener, and I have also literally written the book on how to sharpen pencils. I thought that I would just take you through the few necessary items that are required for any pencil sharpener's toolkit. One of the most important items, of course, are pencils. It is possible to sharpen pencils without a pencil sharpener, but it is impossible to sharpen a pencil without a pencil. So this is my travel kit. This contains just about everything that I need to sharpen a pencil. This is just an old valise that uh, I found on the side of the road one day, and it's worked quite well. I'll just show you what I usually carry with me. I have a selection of pocket sharpeners in here. This one is interesting. This is the single blade pocket sharpener that was given to me when I was an employee of the United States Census Bureau. You always want to make sure that you have a toothbrush. This is for cleaning single and double burr hand crank sharpener, uh, cleaning the cylinder blades. It can also be used to wipe graphite off of any type of blade. I also have band-aids, replacement blades for my pocket sharpeners, replacement blades for a box cutter, tiny little screwdriver, a wooden toothpick. What do you use the wooden toothpick for? Use it to remove pencil sharpening debris from the blade of your single blade pocket sharpener. You don't want to clean the blade with another blade or with a piece of metal because that could actually damage the blade. I also have a pair of tweezers. What are the tweezers for? The tweezers are for picking up pencil shavings and you bag them in a clear plastic bag. The pencil shavings are part of the pencil, which means they are technically the client's property and they should be returned along with the sharpened pencil to the client. I have a number of pencil sharpeners, a lot of different kinds. Sharpening a pencil with a straight blade like a box cutter or a pocket knife is pretty straightforward. We're just going to be rotating the pencil as we remove the paint, shape the cedar, and then further shape the exposed graphite. So we're essentially working in two discrete phases, like you would do with a double hole, double stage pocket sharpener. I like to start on the ridge of the hexagonal shaft of the pencil sharpener. So begin the, the shaping. You can see as we remove the paint, we're exposing the wood. You'll also notice that as I approach the end of the pencil, I'm making a scooping motion with the blade of my box cutter. That's me playing it safe. I don't want to actually cut into the graphite too early because I don't want to produce any divots or gouges in the graphite. That'll weaken the graphite and compromise the aesthetic experience of admiring the pencil point. So now we're going to shape the graphite. I'm going to do it on the edge of the table. This could be really messy. This is why you wear a black smock. And this is why you don't sharpen pencils with sandpaper on an airplane or a moving bus. This is a single burr hand crank sharpener. You can see it has one cylinder blade that rotates around the pencil shaft as you're sharpening it. It also features an extendable faceplate mechanism. So you put the pencil in here, you rotate the rotate the handle and the pencil is drawn into the body of the sharpener. I also have a fine example of a double burr hand crank sharpener. This device is known as the El Casco. Uh, it happens to be the most expensive pencil sharpener in the world. It's hand assembled in Spain. It has two cylinder blades. It also has an observation window on the top. And a shaving drawer. You can see that it really pulverizes the pencil shavings. It looks more like ash. I also have an intriguing sharpener. This is a modern reproduction of a sharpener from 1908 called the Little Shaver. You can see the way it works is you put the shaft of the pencil into this fitted sleeve and then you start shaping it cutting away the wood and exposing the graphite with this little articulated arm that has a blade attached as you rotate the shaft of the pencil. Uh, in addition to all my pencil sharpeners, I also have this, rubber tubing. Why do I have this? I have this because I use rubber tubing to protect the point of a sharpened pencil. So you would cut a piece of the rubber tubing that's long enough to go all the way around the point of the pencil, and then you would place the tubing and its pencil inside a shatterproof plastic tube. So now we have a sharp pencil and it's protected. 
Once I've sharpened the pencil, collected and bagged the shavings, cut the rubber tubing to protect the point, then the pencil is put within this plastic tube, labeled along with the label for the shavings that indicates the sharpening date, the lighting conditions, the level of sharpness achieved in my initials, and then the whole kit and caboodle is sent back through the mail to the client along with the certificate of sharpening. It looks like a lot, but it's really not. If you want to sharpen a pencil, you can collect every piece of equipment that you need for under $1,000, which is what I've done here. So there's no reason to be intimidated by sharpening a pencil.